like to extend a little bit and then just make a cut all the way through, snapping its neck. And as you can see, it's going to drain out. It's definitely spasming, so you want to hold on very tight. If you don't hold on very tight, it is going to go everywhere, I promise you. Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening homesteading in the suburbs. My name is Veronica. Today we are processing out our quail. Now when I say our quail, I mean we are going to be processing out our entire flock of quail. We are essentially getting rid of our quail. Now the main reason that we're getting rid of our quail is because we just haven't used them. Um, so we have chickens. If you don't know, we have lots and lots of chickens that we raise both for meat and eggs. And so when it comes to raising the quail, it was ultimately for, um, for dog food for our dog Milo but he didn't really take to it the way that we expected. I think we have to maybe introduce it over a longer period of time. And really, um, there's been a lot of stuff going on with the house build that we are slowly but surely working towards. So right now is just a lot of stuff going on and we don't wanna have to deal with another set of incubation cycles and another set of raising animals and taking care of chicks and all of that um, when we are doing really well with chickens. We'll probably get back into quail in the future because I really do like having quail and I think that they are a wonderful homestead animal but essentially we just have not been using the eggs or the meat so we will give it a break with the quail and then eventually in the future we'll bring quail back onto our homestead. Now today I'm going to show you two methods of butchering quail. So the first method is going to be um, non bloody I guess is the way I'm, I'm gonna describe it so it's gonna be just popping their head off and it stays attached to the body and you won't really see um, the the entire like blood draining or any of that so it'll be way less graphic now the second method is going to be the traditional cutting um, cutting off their head and they will drain out and flop around and the whole bit the other way they do flop around but it's way less graphic so if you don't like that you probably shouldn't be watching this video I am giving you a warning in advance we're gonna jump right into it all right, so as you can see, here are our quail. They are just waiting um, in this little holding pen for right now, um, kicking up all of this, the stuff that's in here, the bedding and all of that. Um, now, what you're gonna want is a pretty decent pair of scissors, all right? I just finished sharpening these. Um, they are, you can see they're kind of like jumping and trying to escape, um, but you really want a nice sharp pair of scissors. If your scissors aren't sharp, what's gonna happen is you're gonna try um, to cut through and it's not gonna cut and the quail is gonna be in pain and it's gonna be a mess for everybody involved. So just make sure that your scissors are nice and sharp. These are just regular kitchen scissors. And then over here, I have just something to put them in. Um, this is just an empty container. So basically, when I'm finished with them, they're just gonna go in here. Now, you also might wanna have something um, like a five gallon bucket to catch all the blood and the heads and stuff like that. I don't really care if it goes here on the floor. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, and so if you don't want it to go like wherever it is in your yard, then get a five gallon bucket. Or you can opt to do this in the kitchen sink. I will not recommend doing it in the kitchen sink for your first time, um, simply because if you don't hold them properly, you're gonna see them flap around a lot and then the blood splatters a lot and it's just not gonna be fun to clean up. Um, and then, yeah, you just don't wanna deal with that. So do it outside somewhere um, or in the garage. If you have a sink like that in the garage, that's how we did it in our first time. Um, but ultimately, I'm just gonna let it drain here onto the floor because it's just in the backyard and I don't really care. All right, so we got our bird here, and as you can see, they're gonna try to escape and flap around. So it's gonna be completely natural that after you butcher them out, they're gonna flop. Um, it probably will last for anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute. Um, so just be aware that that's going to happen. Um, this is the first method, which as you can see, the other ones down there, um, it does not involve any blood. All right, so what you wanna do is you're gonna take your finger like this in a hook, put it underneath their neck over here, put your finger, your, your thumb, right at the base of their head, very, um, hard just push down and quickly pull so right after that the bird is going to be flopping around um, as you can see it's kind of limp right now and if I let it go it's going to start flapping around so I'm just going to put it over here and it'll be flopping like that for a little bit but it will stop within 30 seconds to a minute or so which is completely normal so when this happens don't be alarmed that's what it's supposed to be doing the nerves are um, just allowing it to die but that's how it works. All right, so now in this method, I'm gonna use my scissors. 
I'll do this one from afar and then we have one more and I will take you in close, um, get you a close up shot and see exactly what it is I'm doing. But some of them are gonna be a little bit more finicky. Um, hold them tight because this method, there is gonna be blood and you don't want it splattering around because it will go on you and get everything else stained. Um, so essentially we're gonna do the same thing. Their necks are gonna be like this and you're gonna come here and go right in, um, right underneath their, their head essentially. All right, so I'll stand up for this. So I'm come up here, I like to hold it like this, here quickly and cut all the way off and let it drain out. And it's gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna release it, right? Because it is gonna splatter around everywhere. It's gonna flap its arms, its wings, everything. Um, it'll take about 30 seconds or so for the blood to drain. And then that's pretty much it. Once it goes limp, I can feel like the legs and the, um, the wings relaxing a little bit. Then. I'll put in with the rest of them. All right, so the main thing with this method is to not doubt yourself. Once you have your scissors around its neck, um, it's really not gonna be super humane if you take your time. Um, I know that in my previous chicken butchering video, I've gotten a lot of comments um, and messages surrounding, you know, how do you work your way up to it? How do you like calm your nerves before you're gonna do it? Really, the best thing that I can tell you is just don't think about it um, because the more that you think about it, the more that you prolong the process, the more stress it is going to be on the bird and you don't want that, all right? So once you have yourself in the space to butcher out your quail, get your scissors, um, just go for it you know you get you get used to it you really do this is just part of the process of raising quail for meat or even if you aren't raising quail for meat it's something that you're gonna end up having to do um, if your birds are sick or anything else like that so just don't think about it too much um, that's pretty much my best advice now I'm gonna take you closer in and get you another shot um, so you can see exactly what I'm doing all right so this is our last bird that we're gonna do today um, I am gonna try to show you as as close up as possible. Um, really what you wanna do is make a cut right here, all right? You don't want it to be so far back, just do it right here behind the neck. Um, and then the same thing, you got your scissors and go as quickly as possible. I like to extend a little bit and then just make a cut all the way through, snapping its neck. And as you can see, it's going to drain out it's definitely spasming, so you want to hold on very tight. If you don't hold on very tight, it is going to go everywhere, I promise you. Um, that's what happened the first time that we butchered out quail, and it got all over the garage. It was really not fun cleaning quail blood off of the garage walls um, for the next couple hours. So, you know, just try to hold it until it stops. It's going to take a little bit. Um, generally, it takes 30 seconds or so, but it could definitely take longer. And you can see that the neck here is starting to relax a bit. Um, the same thing, right? So if I start letting go, um, it's, I think, okay to put down now, but you can see it's switching a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. All right, so that is the actual killing part of it. Now I am going to take this inside and I'm going to show you how I de-skin it and essentially just get it ready for cooking. Now um, I'm only going to do one because the rest of them are actually going to go to Milo um, for food so I don't need to de-skin it and all the other stuff. The dog can eat all of the feathers and the feet and the beaks and all of the other stuff that is part of the quail um, but I'll show you how to do one as if we are preparing it like we do for the grill um, or for cooking or whatever else. All right, so now what you're gonna wanna do, first thing is you're gonna remove the wings followed by the feet. So I like to take it upside down just because I can see it better and right here where the wings meet the rest of the body, you're gonna just cut it right off just like that. And the same thing with the next one. All right, so that is the wings. Now the legs, we're gonna do right here at these little joints, right? So where you can bend them like this, that is where we're gonna cut. These ones might be a little bit harder. This is where good scissors come in. Um, so just right about there, all the way. The same thing with the next one. All right, so now, um, I actually like to save the feathers sometimes because you can make earrings with them. They're actually really pretty. I mean, look at all of that spotting. Um, so yeah, if you wanna save the feathers, now would be the time to do it. But essentially what you're gonna do, right, the skin is very thin. What you're going to do is you're gonna take it just like this and you're going to 
like upside down, right, on the breast, and you're gonna just rip it open and get a good grip on it, and then just rip it open like that. All right, expose the meat, and the same thing, and just keep going all the way down. And I'm always surprised by how quickly it turns into actually looking like meat. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just the city person in me, but you're just gonna wanna take it out of its skin and it just starts looking like that little bird. Just rip it, you're not gonna rip through the meat or anything. Um, so just, you can hear it kind of coming off here um, and just keep pulling until you got the whole thing off. All right, so that is the skin. Um, if you're gonna save any of these, then set them aside. If not, then, you know, trash them. And I would always recommend doing this near a sink, right, so that you can rinse it off as you go. All right, so at this point, it should look like that. It still has all the organs and stuff in it, so our next step is opening it up and getting all of that out. Um, we're gonna flip it upside down like this, all right? And through here, right, we're gonna take our scissors, just clean them off a little bit. So now we're gonna take our scissors and slide them up and you're gonna wanna go on one side of the back. So along this bone here, right, the spine, you're gonna be able to feel it very clearly and you're gonna go on one side of the spine and cut all the way through. And the same thing on the other side of the spine and just pull that right out. All right, so now we have a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this. This is the, the icky part. I don't really save anything from here. I'm not really sure if anyone does, um, but essentially I just like to kind of break this bone just a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, spread it open and then we're gonna get the lungs out of here. Everything, that's the heart, right? You could give that to the dog or something if you really wanna keep it. Um, it's gonna be very slippery, so if you want to keep that there you go and then just getting everything out of here that's not meat all right and there you have it so we have quail meat right that is exactly how we're gonna put it on the grill or cook it up you can stuff it um, tie it and do that all right um, I am not gonna debone it. It just takes a little bit too much time for me to debone it. Um, I know that you can, um, which would involve kind of like taking out these, these rib cages here um, and just leaving it like that. But for me, I'm just gonna do it like that. And if you want, you can get off some of this extra fat here too. But essentially, that is ready to go. Now, the one thing that I would recommend is take this and brine it, all right? Which means put it in salt water for maybe a day or two because if you try to cook this right away, what's gonna happen is the bird is gonna go into rigor mortis if it hasn't already, um, and it's gonna be very hard and it's not gonna taste great. So definitely let this rest for a day or two. Um, I usually do two days um, in the refrigerator in salt water, and then you're ready to cook. All right guys, so there you have it. Everything that you need to know to butcher quail, two different methods. Now I'm gonna be feeding this to Milo. If you are going to be feeding it to your dog, I would definitely recommend you can just leave the bird whole like that. You deep freeze them and then they're good to go. You can feed the whole bird um, to your animal. Just make sure that they're used to eating it like that and they're not gonna get an upset stomach, which is a mistake I made the first time around. If you wanna see how I butcher out my chickens step-by-step, step, then I will leave that video here on the screen somewhere. You can go ahead and check that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.